So, welcome everyone to this talk on structure theory for singular varieties with trivial canonical divisor. Uh, let me thank the organizers for the original uh, invitation to uh, give a talk at uh, the proposed CM uh, event and uh, especially for keeping this uh, event alive by uh, organizing the recording of these talks now. So, uh, in order to start, let me start uh, with the uh, the smooth case of the uh, projective uh, version of the Beauville Bogomolov Fujiki decomposition theorem. So, uh, let X be a projective manifold with trivial uh, canonical divisor or numerically trivial canonical class. Then there exists a finite etal cover called X tilde here, uh, which splits as uh, A times a couple of yi's and then a couple of zj's, all factors are projective, such that a is an abelian variety, yi is a, a simply connected Calabiao uh, manifold, which means that uh, the canonical divisor is linearly trivial and there are no other uh, holomorphic p forms, so h naught omega p is zero for p between strictly between zero and the dimension. And uh, Zj is an irreducible holomorphic symplectic, also called hypercalar manifold, um, which means, uh, as uh, in the Calabiao case, there is a simply connectedness uh, assumption and also a second assumption on the uh, algebra of holomorphic forms. Namely, in this case, we require the H naught uh, omega Zj to be uh, generated by a holomorphic symplectic two form. And just to remind you uh, about the proof, which we've seen uh, in another, presented in another talk. So by Yao, we know that there is a keller einstein uh, Riemannian or Keller metric, and then we use holonomy theory uh, in particular, the Dewam decomposition theorem for the universal cover, um, which uh, then uh, splits into a flat factor and uh, something compact by the very important Chiga Gromol theorem. And then uh, we use also a uh, Bochner principle about uh, parallel uh, holomorphic forms. Uh, so, a lot of uh, differential geometry and uh, analysis which goes into this proof. And although the classes, with, as I presented them in the projective case, have a completely algebra geometric plus topological um, description. So the question arises, uh, what about uh, singular varieties? Yeah? So you might ask, why should I be interested in uh, singular varieties which are similar to, to these? So uh, the first reason is that there are a lot of examples and uh, especially in the uh, case of uh, irreducible holomorphic symplectic type uh, manifolds there are many more or much more uh, singular examples than uh, smooth examples and um, so uh, if you take uh, to produce such examples if you take a simply connected Calabiao or an irreducible holomorphic symplectic manifold as above uh, together with a finite group of uh, holomorphic uh, automorphisms acting on this X tilde. And you assume that this action preserves the trivializing uh, N form, holomorphic N form, um, and it is, the action is free in co-dimension one, so that fixed points of individual elements of G only occur along co-dimension two subvarieties, or higher co-dimensional subvarieties even, um, then you take the quotient of x tilde by g and you get x and um, you want to understand uh, how this x look like and how this sits in some sort of classification. Um, another way to arrive at examples, uh, in low dimension this is proven and in high dimension this is conjectural, um, good minimal models of varieties of Cordyra dimension zero uh, are uh, those uh, singular uh, analogs of uh, kx trivial uh, manifolds and you want to have some sort of structure theory and especially ask yourself after some finite maybe branched cover can I split this into a torus or an abelian variety and some other types of varieties which I can then 
uh, analyze in uh, much more detail individually. And then uh, one of the main motivations actually comes from singular moduli of sheaves on K3 surfaces. Um, and uh, the, there are these famous examples which admit a symplectic resolution due to O'Grady. And, um, but basically it was proven that these are the only examples where you have a, such a symplectic resolution. But nevertheless, the singular uh, she, uh, moduli spaces, they look like a little bit uh, IHS uh, type varieties. And you want to understand in which sense they are sort of indecomposable and uh, one of the building blocks of the uh, structure theory in uh, the singular case in higher dimensions. And so um, let me fix my setup, which I will keep uh, only shortly. So this is preliminary. I will add something uh, later. So X, uh, if not mentioned otherwise, will always denote a normal projective variety with trivial canonical sheaf. And uh, sometimes I need the trivializing uh, holomorphic n form. I call this alpha. And then I assume, in addition, that the singularities are not so wild, uh, especially motivated by the minimal model program. And I'm assuming that the singularities are canonical, which in this case can be easily defined as just to mean that this alpha extends to any resolution of singularities. And the aim of my talk, I have two aims, is, uh, are the, the aims are the following. Uh, first, I will discuss uh, the first decomposition type results. So these will not the, uh, be the, the final outcome, um, but these were the first steps. So the, the talk in this sense is uh, slightly historic because when I started to prepare this talk, I uh, noticed uh, and it slightly sent some shiver down my spine that, uh, okay, I was involved in some of this, so we proved these things almost 10 years ago. And this was kind of, uh, uh, yeah, it didn't feel like that. Okay, now you know how old I am. And uh, so the second uh, aim is to discuss uh, the building blocks of, uh, of the structure theory, so the indecomposable varieties. And I will explain what I mean by that uh, in a second. Okay, so if you have such an X as in setup, I want to first uh, understand uh, if I think and remember the Boville Bogomolov uh, Fujiki decomposition theorem, um, this abelian factor, which plays a slightly different role than uh, the other factors. And I want to explain now how to split off the abelian part, the abelian variety part. And for this, I define the following invariant, which at first looks dangerous. Namely, I consider Q tilde of X, which is the maximum of all H1 of O of X tilde, where X tilde uh, lies over X, and X tilde to X is a finite uh, etal, uh, finite cover, uh, which is etal over the regular or smooth locus of X. So these things um, branch in co-dimension two and uh, higher. Um, for a smooth X, uh, those don't exist, but in the singular case, these play a really, really important role in the structure theory, and we have to take care of them. And we call such a gamma a quasi-etal cover or quasi-etal map. Okay, so um, you might be scared by this maximum because a priori this uh, might go up to infinity, but part of the theorem of Kavamata, which was proven long time ago, 85, um, is that this is invariant is finite for X as in the setup. So after such a quasi-etal cover, um, you can always split off an abelian variety from uh, X or X tilde, um, and this abelian variety has dimension exactly this Q tilde X of X and what remains has Q tilde equal to zero. Yeah, so you can sort of solve this problem of splitting off the abelian part in uh, an algebra geometric way. And so because of this result of Kavamata, 
I will do this fo the following. I will change the setup to include also this condition that Q tilde of X is equal to zero. So I'm assuming I cannot split off any abelian variety even uh, by going to higher and higher um, quasi-etal covers. So this fact that you have to look at all covers and compute the irregularity, so H1 of O, of all these quasi-etal covers, this doesn't look, and in fact, it's not so easy to describe invariant. Um, at the end of the theory, and this mainly depends on the Bochner principle, which will be explained by uh, Henri Renancia, um, uh, the, the, this Bochner principle also in the singular case implies that you compute, can compute this Q tilde down on X, or at least you can detect uh, whether Q tilde is zero uh, by just looking at X. Um, so here is the statement, um, X as in the original setup, so not assuming Q tilde equal to zero, then uh, the following are equivalent. So first, Q tilde of X is zero, and B, there are no s sections in the mth reflexive uh, symmetric power of the cotangent sheaf. So no reflexive symmetric uh, one uh, symmetric one forms, symmetric m forms. Yeah. So this uh, wedge wedge uh, means a double dual to make uh, this sheaf which I have there um, reflexive. Now, so this is um, a purely uh, algebra geometric statement, but you prove it using Bochner principle, which relies on the existence of a Kähler Einstein metric. And uh, this is really, really useful uh, and a, a very uh, important result, I think. Okay, so much uh, um, about this invariant Q tilde and the abelian part. So the next step, now that you've split off the abelian part, is um, you want to decompose the tangent sheaf of X further. Yeah, because uh, so the first shadow of a decomposition of a cover or of a decomposition of X itself is a splitting of the tangent sheaf. And I will explain on the next uh, um, two or three slides um, some ideas that uh, are presented in detail in my paper with Kebekus and Peter Nell. Uh, which appeared in the Mori birthday conference volume. Uh, but I also want to mention that many of the ideas in this paper come from a much older paper of Peter Noel in 94, which in turn relies on some ideas uh, in Bogomolov's work. So what is the observation that makes this um, pro program start? So how do you want to decompose Tx? So the first observation is that X is not uniruled, yeah, because you have canonical singularities and uh, you have this holomorphic n form which trivializes the uh, the canonical uh, sheaf. Um, you you cannot be uniruled because if you have the rational curves with which cover, they would kill the holomorphic n form. Okay, that's an easy observation. Um, the corollary, which is very important uh, from this, is that the tangent sheaf. Uh, it's a reflexive sheaf, so torsion-free, um, is actually semi-stable with respect to any ample divisor H on X. Yeah, so you have some semi-stability and this follows uh, from uh, Miyaoka's generic semi-positivity theorem in the following way. So for a general complete intersection curve uh, with respect to this uh, H, uh, this will be a curve C lying in the regular locus, um, the restriction of the cotangent sheaf, or around C it's a bundle, to C is actually NEF, yeah, due to non-uniruledness, this is Miyaoka, together with the computation of the degree of uh, omega 1 of x, which is kx times C, which is zero because kx is trivial, um, this implies, by definition of NEFness essentially, uh, that uh, this restriction is semi-stable. And then uh, it follows easily that uh, the original sheaf, uh, uh, so the dual of Tx, which is uh, omega 1 double dual, is semi-stable, so which means that Tx is semi-stable. Yeah, so you have some semi-stability, which gives you some sort of uh, upper bound for degrees of subsheaves. And then the strategy is 
to find subsheaves, um, if there are any, um, inside Tx that realize this bound. So mu h of uh, s is zero, which is the mu h of Tx, and then try to split them off in a quasi etal cover. Yeah, so you might not be able to split them off on x uh, itself, but uh, you uh, you try to do that in a cover. And using the, these covers seems to be a good idea uh, in the structure theory because we already uh, did that uh, in the discussion of this uh, invariant Q tilde. Okay, that's the strategy. Using sem or the the, um, the algebra geometric strategy. Um, I will later mention another uh, proof by Henri. Yeah, so using this strategy, I will now mention this proof or this result. You can prove the following, as I said in this paper uh, with Quebecus and Peternel, um, a similar or the same result was also proven by Henri uh, using um, Keller -Ein singular Keller Einstein metrics a little bit later, maybe with a little bit more uh, information uh, uh, contained, but I will formulate the result as we proved it uh, back then. So access in setup, then indeed there exists a quasi etal cover x tilde of x such that the tangent sheaf of this um, quasi etal cover splits into a direct sum of ej and this ej now cannot be split anymore in the strongest possible sense which means, okay we call this strongly stable, so strongest possible sense means that uh, Ej is uh, stable on x tilde with respect to any polarization on x tilde and even if you go to a further quasi etal cover which lies even over x tilde you cannot uh, it's, it stays stable with respect to any polarization on the further cover so you can you cannot split it anymore even if you go higher and higher so this is one statement. The second statement is that this um, subsheaf, e, subsheaves Ej, they are uh, integrable in the sense that uh, um, they define a profoliation, so the bracket of Ej with itself lies in Ej, and they have trivial determinant. Okay, that's the statement. And I will just uh, remind you of some, um, some techniques we used uh, in the proof of this result. So um, just to give a, a hint uh, on, which, uh, on which sort of theorems and, and, and uh, uh, points we, uh, we relied uh, in this proof. So the first step, uh, A, so if you, if you have a subsheaf S in Tx uh, which realizes uh, the bound, so it has slope 0 and it's actually stable, um, then we use the following result um, by uh, Campana Peternel from 11 and then Campana Paun from 15. Uh, so some singular uh, derivative of this. Let me just uh, formulate the smooth result. So if x is smooth, projective and not uniruled and you have a divisor d on x and if there exists a p between 0 and the dimension and a non-trivial morphism from uh, the sheaf of uh, p forms uh, on x uh, to, um, to ox of d, then uh, d is pseudo-effective. So this is a this is a positivity again semi-positivity uh, statement. And uh, what do we use this result for? Um, well, if you have such a subsheaf uh, s which has the the degree equal to zero. Uh, then I look at the determinant, which is a, a okay, which is a vile divisorial sheaf, and then I apply this result to see that actually not just the slope is zero, but because of this um, this uh, this semi-positivity or in the other case semi-negativity, uh, if I look at T X statement, um, then uh, I actually get that the determinant is numerically uh, trivial. Yeah? So this is, this is the first uh, ingredient. Now the second ingredient, um, 
so just uh, remind you so having this determinant uh, numerically trivial um, together with the fact that uh, I split off the maximal uh, abelian variety uh, will eventually lead to the fact that the determinant of the ej is actually trivial uh, not just uh, not just numerically trivial okay so second ingredient in this um, in this proof um, you use the extension theorem for differential forms on okay ca canonical uh, varieties with canonical singularities to um, extend a result which is well known in the smooth case to our singular setup namely the result is the following if you're on a variety with trivial canonical bundle or sheaf um, you can do the following you take uh, a p, p form and you can pair it with an n minus p form and you get an n form but you know that h naught of omega n uh, is just one dimensional spanned by alpha so it's essentially c so you get a pairing and you prove that this pairing is non-degenerate and uh, what do you use this uh, b for well you can imagine that this is useful and essentially the main point so if you have such an s and you want to split it off in the cover then you need a complement a complementary subsheaf and you find this using this non-degenerate non -degenerate pairing okay and then okay if you look at the the theorem um, the only thing that uh, I haven't explained at least some of the basic ideas I haven't explained is this integrability so why is this a foliation well this is a, a very important result by Demai um, which um, um, shows, or in general, this is a, a result about degeneracy subsheaves um, inside tangent bundles, and you use that result to show that this EJ are integrable. Okay, um, let me go back once. Uh, as I said, uh, this is the algebra geometric proof, uh, although you see that um, this involves um, some uh, sort of complex uh, analytic complex differential geometric ingredients especially c uh, in the argument uh, we use for b there's also some complex geometry and uh, the same is true for cp15 uh, now yeah, so there it's it's not as algebraic as i make it look okay so after you you have this um you have this uh, theorem once where you can uh, split the tangent sheaf um, there are two two ways to go now or you, you have to answer two questions and I will just answer one uh, because uh, the the other one is uh, is uh, contained in other people's talks uh, in this conference who also contributed uh, much more to this this other route so uh, the one thing is if you can split the tangent sheaf and it you have found the maximal splitting you cannot split the ej further in covers then you want to decompose x tilde so that's uh, that's important but also if you know this algorithm could stop in the first step namely that tx cannot be split on in any cover so this means that um, tx is strongly stable itself yeah and this is what i want to uh, discuss uh, for the rest of the talk so what types of varieties with strongly stable tangent sheaves uh, are there can you produce examples and if you can produce examples can you put them into classes and then the question is are these all possibilities or all possible classes and this is of course very closely related and in the end leads to a reasonable definition of singular versions of the notion of a Calabi-Yau manifold or an irreducible holomorphic symplectic manifold. And I will not just give you the, the eventual um, definitions, but in order to um, exemplify uh, sort of the way of thinking or what you, how, how you arrive at this, uh, let me give some examples first and then discuss these so the first example is uh, very very classical but it, it shows a lot of 
lot of things that that go on and for everything you prove here you should first look at this example to see whether the claim you make doesn't destroy it so you look at an abelian surface um, you look at the, the natural involution, A goes to minus A, and then the quotient is a singular comma surface, um, which is simply connected, which you can see in two ways. Either you smooth it using a deformation, or you take a resolution, a minimal resolution of, these, uh, of the 16 singularities this uh, X has, and you find a smooth K3 surface, so you see uh, that X is uh, simply connected. So what does this say? This says that you have this simply connected X, um, which also has a holomorphic uh, symplectic two form and no uh, holomorphic, holomorphic one form. Uh, but um, the smooth locus of this X is uh, highly non simply connected, and actually uh, the Q tilde of this X is, uh, is two, is maximal. Yeah? So by going to a quasi tile cover, suddenly a lot of one forms appear. Uh, although the X is, um, is simply connected. Okay, so second example. Um, so now let S be a projective K3 surface, uh, which has a symplectic involution. Okay, these, these exist. We call this involution tau. Then it's known that the fixed point set of this involution is actually a finite set of points. And then you make Z modulo 4z act on the product s times s via the following map so this is the generator x comma y goes to tau y comma x and this is an order 4 automorphism and then you take the quotient x is equal to s times s modulo z4 and you see that this has isolated q factorial singularities okay q factoriality just because it's a finite group you see uh, the, since the the, thing, uh, the fixed points of tau are isolated. This uh, also uh, is true for, for x. Uh, so the singularities are isolated. Um, and then there is this uh, result by Namikawa, which then says that these uh, have to be terminal. Uh, moreover, you see by construction that um, this uh, fourfold um, has the algebra of uh, holomorphic forms of a holomorphic symplectic manifold and it's also simply a uh, holomorphic symplectic um, variety so you only have this two form essentially and um, but somehow in this structure theory um, after you you go to this quasi tile cover it splits as a product of two k3s so it's somehow splittable yeah so the tangent uh, the tangent sheaf is not strongly uh, stable and uh, so you don't want to consider this as an IHS because you can split it. Okay, so the third example is um, again you start with a projective K3. Now you take an anti-symplectic involution. Also, this is uh, you, there are classical examples for this. And now you look at the Hilbert scheme of two points uh, on S, denoted by S uh, upper bracket two. This is an uh, irreducible holomorphic symplectic manifold um, with an induced involution, which we call tau. And then you take uh, as our x the, this um, Hilbert scheme of two points modulo this involution. This has trivial canonical uh, sheaf. It has no other forms. Okay, you have constant functions. You have this uh, holomorphic uh, four form. Um, but no other forms, it's simply connected. So this looks down on X, looks like a Calabi Yau, but really, uh, if you go up uh, this quasi tile cover, it's an IHS. Okay, and it's also simply connected. Okay, so what do these examples show you? Um, well, they show you that. Um, the, the way of defining the two classes in the smooth case, namely you impose uh, simple connectedness, pi, pi 1 x equal to e, plus a condition on the differential form, forms, this leads to, uh, in the singular case, to examples you don't want to have. Yeah, you, uh, you, you just have, you can, you don't see the covers where the thing splits, 
um, and you cannot guarantee uh, that the tangent bundle is strongly stable by such kind of conditions. Um, so that's not a, a good way to go, at least from our point of view. Um, so if you look at the examples again, I mean, you can prevent uh, the pathologies by requiring the smooth locus to be simply connected. But this is really uh, a priori too strong to impose because this is usually very difficult to compute uh, the pi one of the smooth locus. Uh, and especially um, contrary to the smooth case, you have no a priori control over this pi one uh, of x rec. This could be infinite, this could be huge. Um, so there is no chega gromol type result, which makes uh, so arguments uh, so very, very difficult um, if you want to decompose a given variety into some classes where you have this condition, you first have to deal with the fact that your singular loc uh, your smooth locus could be could have infinite fundamental group and that usually is, is very difficult to handle. Especially if you have infinite fundamental group, you take the such a cover of the smooth locus, you can you cannot close it up to give you uh, an, a projective variety or a quasi projective variety lying over over x. So that's not very good. Okay, so what is, if you think about this uh, a little bit and uh, longer and you want to uh, somehow prevent the pathologies and also not impose something on topology, um, you arrive or we arrived at the, these definitions. So uh, we call um, a normal projective variety with trivial canonical sheaf and canonical singularities Calabi-Yau if um, it has no other uh, holomorphic p-forms for p between 0 and the dimension, but uh, not just x is required to, to have no forms, but also, also all quasi etal covers. Okay, this uh, looks dangerous, but uh, okay, I will comment on this. And similarly, for the IHS case, you call this IHS if it has a holomorphic symplectic two-form, which generates the algebra of holomorphic forms on X, but also on every quasi etal cover. And this is actually, uh, I will name the examples, not as difficult to check as it looks. So let, let, me, let me make two remarks, which already indicate that maybe these uh, definitions are not too bad. So first remark A, by uh, Beauville's 83 paper, uh, if X is in addition smooth, then it's Calabiao in the sense I just introduced, if and only if the holonomy of the keller einstein metric is exactly SU. So this is, um, this is very good. So essentially we reproduce the definition in the smooth case in the, for Calabiao's. For uh, IHS, somehow the situation was uh, kind of strange. If you um, look at our um, uh, paper in the Mori volume, we say there is this <coughs> um, old paper, or, or this, this paper of Nieper, Wiskirchen and Heubrechts, where uh, it is proven that um, if you impose uh, the conditions here, which I have here in the definition under B, and uh, in addition uh, X is smooth, then it's already simply connected. So it's an IHS uh, manifold. But this proof has a gap, and actually um, this gap was uh, fixed very, very recently by uh, Martin Schwald, very recent preprint from 2020, uh, which uh, says, or he proves, that if X is smooth, projective variety, uh, trivial canonical bundle, and you impose two conditions, namely holomorphic symplectic, uh, and you require that H1O is zero, then it's already simply connected. So an IHS manifold. So this means in the definition of IHS manifold, um, if X is already smooth, you can replace the condition on simple connectedness by this condition on the vanishing irregularity. And that's a, a really great result, I think. And it says that uh, our definition B in the smooth case is um, equivalent <coughs> to the definition of irreducible uh, holomorphic symplectic manifold in this, in this smooth case. Okay, so let me give you uh, two more, um, some more uh, arguments why this definition is good. Um, and uh, let me first mention the two things related to other talks 
in this uh, conference. So um, Henri uh, will explain to you that uh, these are the, the correct definitions when you come from the world of holonomy, so differential, ge differential geometric holonomy. So they match up exactly um, with uh, Berger's classification of holonomy groups and um, so a posteriori um, these, uh, this justifies again why you should make these definitions. And of course uh, the main reason uh, really from the end is that uh, the decomposition theorem uh, as proven by Andreas Höring and Thomas Peternell shows you that you can actually split off a cover, split a cover of your X into into uh, an abelian variety and then some factors uh, which belong to one of the two classes, uh, Calabiao or irreducible holomorphic symplectic. Oh, that's good. Also, I already mentioned that there are many examples and uh, let me mention two um, big classes of, uh, of examples, especially in the IHS case, which show that this condition um, that you have to um, look at the algebra of, holom of holomorphic forms on every quasi-etal cover is actually checkable. And so indeed singular moduli spaces of sheaves on K3s, so those that don't admit a, uh, a um, symplectic resolution are IHS in, in the sense I introduced on the previous slide. And this was proven by Arvid Perego from Nancy. And another construction, also very sort of very classical, related to a lot of beautiful mathematics, is um, if you start with a with a K three uh, and you assume that uh, it lies over an Enrique surface, then there is a construction which is called the relative prim variety associated to this cover, and this relative prim variety uh, are prim varieties are actually IHS in the sense I just introduced, and this was proven by Abarellos, Julia Saka, and Ferretti. Um, okay, so I have this um, relation with holonomy, the decomposition theorem, many examples, but also the properties of uh, the two classes are as expected, and let me focus on the IHS case again. So everyone I think knows uh, Matsushita's results about vibrations on uh, irreducible holomorphic symplectic manifold. So if you have a vibration and it's a proper vibration, then it's actually a Lagrangian vibration. Um, and then you want the base to be Pn. You can prove it uh, if it's uh, smooth, but in general, even if it's singular, you know it's a Fano um, of Picard number one. Um, and uh, But actually, so if you have a singular IHS variety as introduced above, Martin Schwald again proved that Matsu these results of Matsushita, they generalize to this singular setup. Yeah, so in particular, the base of such a vibration is a potentially singular Fano variety of Picard number one. If you ask weaker conditions, um, as you do, for example, in the work of Bakker and Lehn um, on the deformation theory, uh, where you don't look at quasi-etal covers, but just on uh, invariants defined on X, these, uh, if you just impose these weaker conditions, you might have vibrations uh, which where the base is not Fano, but a singular Calabiao. Yeah, so this somehow shows that um, while the deformation theory of these uh, larger classes with the weaker conditions is still very, very good, uh, the vibration and structure theory is, is different. Okay, so this is the first property set of properties you expect. And the second uh, set of properties is the following. Although I was very, very hesitant to impose a condition on a topology, um, a posteriori the topology is almost as you like it. So um, if you use Campana's uh, work 95 on fundamental group and positivity of the cotangent bundle, uh, related to the Shafarevich map, so also related to Kola's work on the Shafarevich map, then uh, you can see that if X is an IHS variety or an even dimensional Calabiao, then the fundamental group has to be finite. And if you then uh, add in another result of myself, uh, Stefan Kebekus and Thomas Peternell, 
comparing the etal fundamental group of a KLT variety uh, with the etal fundamental group of its smooth locus, you see that the etal fundamental group of the smooth locus is also finite. In fact, once you have a finiteness of this uh, topological fundamental group uh, using a result, which brings me back to the beginning, which you can uh, uh, using an argument, which brings me back to the beginning, namely, uh, which is already present in Beauville's uh, um, first paper on this subject, you can prove that under the same conditions, the fundamental group is actually trivial. So uh, this uh, leaves me uh, with a, an open question where we actually uh, don't have uh, much idea, any ideas about the methods. What about odd dimensional Calabi-Yaus? So just to, to, to say why the difference between odd and even, um, in the even dimensional case, the Euler characteristic of such a Calabi-Yau is positive, And this uh, is sort of the, the entrance key to using Campana's work, whereas in the odd dimensional case, it's zero, so you cannot, you cannot use that. Okay, so uh, this is what I wanted to tell you about the structure theory of uh, singular varieties with trivial canonical divisor. And uh, as I said, I thank the organizers very much for, for making this happen. And uh, I'm looking forward to or maybe discussing a couple of questions with you uh, next week. Bye.